Hey everybody, Sean from SP Productions here, back today with another video. So today I'm gonna to be unboxing the Mandalorian helmet made by Anovos. Before I jump into the unboxing, I would just offer a word of caution before pre-ordering anything directly from Anovos. While Anovos makes really great stuff, they have historically had some challenges in meeting their delivery deadlines, and especially in the current pandemic environment, they've even seemingly had issues delivering product that they have in stock. What I did was I pre-ordered this from the Big Bad Toy Store, which I would highly recommend them. They were great. Big Bad Toy Store, two thumbs up. So that being said, let's dive into the unboxing. So before we dive into the helmet, let's see what this is. So a little note here from Anovos, uh, just mentioning that this helmet, it was actually manufactured in the USA, kind of a production change for them. They continue to manufacture a lot of their products in China. They did start moving some of that stuff to the US. As they're noting here on the card, each one of the artisans kind of hand paints each of the helmets, gives each of the helmets its own unique look. Uh, protected in these two pieces of cardboard, the cover art for the Mandalorian helmet, which I think is really nice. Uh, always enjoyed these and it gives you a little bit of information about how they actually made the helmet. Currently, there's two companies out there that have a Star Wars license to make pieces like this, Anovos and then EFX. Both of the companies were given access to the Mandalorian helmets to make their own replicas. Anovos, their approach was to do a digital scan of one of the Mandalorian helmet props, and then from that, they were able to create a master and then manufacture their replicas. The EFX is advertising that they actually cast their helmets from the molds that were used to make the Mandalorian helmets. As to which approach is better, until you get both in your hands, it's kind of hard to say. So fortunately, I don't have an EFX helmet in hand, so we'll just be reviewing the Anovos helmet. So as the, the note says, this helmet is made from fiberglass and then weathered with various uh, pigments, along with a fully lined interior, which I'll show you more as we dig into the actual helmet. Two layers of protective foam protecting the helmet in the box. Uh, before I even dig in, I'll just offer some thoughts on that approach is I own some other Anovos products and I'll kind of show you how, as an example, the Kylo Ren helmet actually comes in its own decorative box. So similar to this little poster card that they printed uh, and included in the Mandalorian helmet box, the Anovos Kylo Ren helmet actually came in a in a decorative box to kind of mimic this overall scheme, which I'll, I'll flash a video up so you can kind of see what it looks like. So the Mandalorian helmet comes with the card, uh, but the boxing packaging is all very minimalist, just packing foam and, and packing peanuts. A little bit disappointing as I really liked kind of the decorative Star Wars themed packaging that they used to offer on some of their older products, but. Here you go. So the first thing that falls out of the, the helmet is uh, this bag of custom helmet pads. I'll show you these. Uh, these come with most of the Anovos helmets and I actually really like this approach. The padding's actually pretty decent and they come with a little piece of Velcro so you can custom place them within the helmet to get the best fit for your, your individual head shape. So let's get to the piece at hand. So just a warning here, don't let kids play with the plastic bag. Here it is, the replica Mandalorian helmet made by Anovos. One of the kind of signature looks you get from this character is the front visor and how it kind of comes down. There were some earlier Anovos helmets that came out where the front visor actually looked parallel from top to bottom. Recognizing that there are various versions of the helmet, you know, hero helmets for close-up shots, stunt helmets for stunt work. All the helmets are a little different, so depending on which version they scan or how the actual replica helmets were assembled, you can get different looks, but I kind of prefer the, the Crimpton view down at the bottom. There have been some complaints about the overall paint job, super thick clear coats, fingerprints left in the paint jobs. I'm um, just doing a kind of quick once over here. I don't see any of that on, on this one. Uh, hopefully the camera is kind of picking up the finish. You do get, um, this is kind of a, a good view, you can see kind of this multi-silver toned 
uh, earpiece on this side. You get the various shades of silver and gray kind of on the the, the cheeks on the front. And then on the show, there's some kind of brown tan weathering in the crevices here, which uh, again, as Anobos mentioned in on the, the packet, these are all hand painted by different artists. So each of these kind of stippling patterns that you get for the weathering and the crevices will be unique to the helmet, depending on how your particular artist painted your helmet. But overall, I kind of like the, the weathering. It's, it's subtle, it kind of gets caught in the right light. What I'm looking at here that I'm not a huge fan of and kind of how this they painted the inside of the cheek a different uh, shade or you know different kind of paint than this flat surface and then the the seam line between the you know the paint transitions isn't all that great and you can actually see there's some of the paints actually already starting to chip up yeah not super happy about that I probably would have preferred something a little bit cleaner one of the things I really enjoy about the Inovos helmets is that the higher-end helmets come with a fully lined interior. So hopefully that's kind of shown up on camera. Now this particular helmet's got a little bit of a bubble in the interior liner. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. So right in here, there's like a little bubble. Again, not a huge deal, but for a high-end prop replica, you'd think the finish would be done a little bit cleaner than that. Uh, the visor, just looking at it, kind of through the lens is kind of, again, on the camera, there's actually two visors here. So there's like uh, the outer visor and then an inner visor. On some of the earlier Anobos helmets, the earpieces were kind of jutted out. It looks like they fixed that. Although now I'm looking closer, <sighs> not exactly sure what that is. There seems to be like some kind of white residual powder in the earpieces. I don't know if it's just unfinished resin or something. So just diving a little bit more into the, the paint job, I am noticing kind of a couple dimples. Uh, nothing major, I would say. And a lot of the Mandalorian looks are very weathered and battle damaged, so a lot of folks will just chalk it up to that. Uh, looks like all the details are there, so you get the nice earpiece details along kind of with front visor look, as I mentioned, and then uh, the little the detail panel here uh, on the back of the, the helmet. So you kind of get that multi, multi silver tone uh, finish uh, throughout the helmet, which I think is really nice. So wouldn't be much fun if I didn't try it on, so let's see how it looks. Eh? So, uh, yeah, immediately I will tell you uh, that is a snug fit for a helmet. I've got a relatively small head. So if you haven't seen my Indiana Jones fedora unboxing, I'll link to it, shoot for up here. But that had a hat size to 22 and a half inches. I think it's relatively on the smaller size. And this helmet uh, is a pretty tight fit on me. One of the things I noticed immediately is, and I've got uh, kind of a pointy nose, but uh, you know, my nose is kind of smushed right up against the front visor. So that's really where the custom pads that are included with the piece really come in handy is that you can kind of put some padding toward the front and kind of offset the, the helmet from wherever it starts to bump in your head. But I like the shape of the helmet, the overall look, uh, you know, it's a badass character. I'll probably end up doing a full Mandalorian costume at some point, so this is a good start to that. Given how much uh, some of these helmets are going for, I would expect a little bit of a, of a finer finish, uh, kind of less imperfections in the, the clear coats, a little bit nicer weathering, and some, there's clearly some unfinished uh, work here with some of the resin peeking through on the ear pieces, uh, some of the paint chipping, like on the, the bottom of the chin here and whatnot. Uh, overall, I'd say I'm generally happy with it. It's, it's not perfect, but uh, it's, a, it's a pretty decent piece. Appreciate everyone who's watching. I hope everyone out there is continuing to stay safe, stay healthy, be kind to each other, and take care of each other out there. So again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.